Hey friends, welcome back to my studio. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I'm gonna paint pears. So why paint pears? They're great practice, they're easy to paint. They're shapes, they come in a lot of different shapes and colors. These two pears are hugging. I'll link this reference photo in this video's description. So it's a fun, easy painting to do. I'm gonna use the photo as a traceable. Or you could draw them on because pears are pretty easy to draw too. Um, the other reason is they sell. I'm out of pear paintings, so I need to paint some more. I've got a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas. This one's from Michaels. It's, gal it's an inch and a half thick, gallery wrapped in spline. And I'm gonna paint it a combination. I'm gonna paint the whole background, a combination of yellow oxide and titanium white. Okay guys, let's have some fun. Okay, let's chat about what I've got going on. So I mixed, as I mentioned just a little bit ago, I mixed the yellow oxide with titanium white and you, you get a Naples yellow. I don't think I have Naples. I used to buy Naples yellow and then I realized I could make a really close color with, with titanium white and yellow oxide. I used a two inch flat, I think they call those chipboard brushes from Blick Art Materials and just put it on, dried it with a hair dryer. This is a couple days later because life keeps happening to me. I would rather paint. <laughs> Does that happen to you guys? Life happens and you'd rather be painting. That should be a t-shirt. Hey, Emily, I know you're listening and when you're editing this video, life happens and I'd rather be painting or something like that, whatever I just said. So I'm gonna miss this and put it in a baggie because I've got it. Cause you can see, I don't know if you can see on the video, I think, well, maybe you can't. It looks lighter, but it dries a little bit darker. So I wanna make sure I save this mix. And if it gets to be several days, I'll oh, missed it again. Okay, and then I'm gonna use, I think this will be fun. Um, it makes me a little nervous, but I think it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna use a lot of uh, bright aqua green. I used to use this in some older videos. We're gonna bring this out again. It's a nice, fun, con convenience color. If you want to know how to mix it, it tells you right there the color numbers. I don't know if you can see that. No, it's, I don't, my glasses aren't focusing, focusing, so I can't tell if the, my phone is focusing. So I'm going to paint a lot of that color in the background. It makes, with the yellow oxide, so that's bright aqua green, it makes a pretty green with the yellow oxide. I can also, I think I can make a green with a little bit of black and yellow oxide. I've got raw sienna for the pear. Even though my pears are green in the reference photo, they printed out kind of yellow here on my printer. Oh, I need to back up a little bit. We need, we need to talk about that. So I've got um, a raw sienna. I don't know what I called that. That's raw sienna. Titanium white and Mars black. So I'm going to try and just stick with those colors. If I pop in another color, I'll leave the colors in the video's description and I'll also let you know in the video here. So I printed out my pears in a square crop and then I just found the middle. And then I found the middle here with white chalk pastel. Actually, it's a white general's charcoal pencil that I drew with on my canvas. The nice thing about it being a couple days later is this is dry, nice and dry. So I just, I found half and half and then figured out, well, this is a little more than halfway up, you know, just kind of use my fingers or just kind of measure and just estimated where the pear is. And then said, oh, it comes pretty close over here. Actually, I made it a little fatter than it is because that, that distance is about the same <laughs> it is. So I made a fat pear, but that's okay. One tip is, I don't know if you can see, but this is kind of a straight line and then I curve it. 
and this is kind of a straight line and then I curve it. You don't have to get the curves just right. Just do, or like I drew a straight line here so they have the same baseline. And then I just curved up. And then I didn't get it right. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a line in here. And then I made it fatter. You don't have to get it just right. That's one thing that's so great about pears. You don't have to get them. It's not like a pet portrait I'm working on recently. You know, this is much looser, easier going, more forgiving. That's why you'll see that artists paint a lot of pears. And, and as I mentioned in the intro, they sell. I'm pretty sure I've already given that lecture. Sorry, guys. So I, that's where we are. Oh, and then this is halfway, but then I just drew a horizon line that's a little lower. So here's the original photo, which I'm pretty sure I flashed in the intro. And then I just went in Photoshop and made a line, lighten the background from about there on up, just so I could see. And then what's so interesting is when it printed out on my printer, I actually like this better. It didn't understand the colors. I like the yellow pairs better. Okay, I think that gets us up to speed. I'm gonna use, before I get rid of you guys, should I just use this angle brush? That might be kind of nice. I can get in there. This is a three quarter inch angle brush from Royal and Langnickel. It's their Zen line. I think we'll use that. We'll get some, we could even go bigger. I'm kind of tempted. Hang on a second, I'll be right back. So what popped into my mind when I held this up, it's kind of small. We could paint these with a bigger brush. So then I, I found a one inch brush. This one's from Low Cornell. I'm like, it's still kind of small. And then I'm going, well, shoot, we should just use the two inch brush. I think I will. Um, I also have this one and a half inch brush that I really don't use much. Um, it's really nice from Artist Loft. But I really prefer to hold it back here. I don't know. Well, I don't know. We could use the one and a half. I'm going to go with the two. So the other thing that pops into my head is that a lot of times I don't do it, but it is really good advice to use the biggest brush you can for a painting. At least start there. Okay, guys, so I'm going to do the two and then I'll be back in a bit. I thought I'd pop in because I'm gonna stop here for today I think I might paint later late tonight we'll see I ended up going down to the one inch flat brush from low Cornell just for some more control I really like what this did with the background but it has like it just I just had a little less control with it which isn't bad I got some neat things I got a drip that I left um, I just want more control on the pair. And then I'll just keep kind of working on the values. My sun's come, gonna come, my light's coming from over this way. And play with it. I like the colors. The browns and the aquas are pretty. The green's kind of fun. Even though I said I like the yellow pear. Pears, it does have some green in it on this one. And it has quite a bit of green on the reference photo, which I've already showed you a couple times now. Okay, I just wanted to pop in and let you know what I was up to. You make, you can mix a nice brown with black and the raw sienna. I already talked about the greens. This is um, bright aqua green with some black and a little bit of raw sienna to mute it down because um, orange and blue are complements. So this is kind of orangey, that's kind of bluey. Mutes it down. Oops, hopefully that was in frame. Okay, guys, I'll be back after a bit.
Okay, guys, what do you think? <laughs> oh, here. We're going to wiggle a little. I'm going to back up a little bit. Hopefully, gosh darn, I hope what the last couple things I painted were in frame. I forgot I was zoomed in. So my light's coming from over here, coming down this direction. I really, the bright aqua green, um, yellow oxide and raw sienna. So you have a cool and a warm and a warm. Of course, the black is pretty cool. Um, sometimes it looks a little warm depending on what you're using it with and what you're mixing it with. And then titanium white um, is light. I've got water running. So I have light and dark I can work with and warm and cool I can work with is the point of that. And then a limited palette, which even the palette I think looks pretty. So not putting out, you know, you can if you want to, but putting out a dozen or more colors sometimes makes it harder. Just limit it to a, like a, a light and a dark and a warm and a cool. Or a lot of times I'll use the primaries. I'll use a quinacridone, cad yellow, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow medium hue, and then sometimes thalo blue, sometimes thalo blue green shade, sometimes Prussian blue. Um, even doing that, even those are sort of primary colors, um, that can really help you unify your painting. What else? So I just kept putting on layers until I liked it, kind of changing the shadow shape a little bit. I like that I have, so what helps make it look round is it's lighter on this side and it goes darker to this side. But then I have some reflective light. It's lighter on this edge, it's darker inside, not right to the edge, but in here. And then it's dark where they meet, where they're hugging. You know, so generally lighter here, darker here, but then I, where it's sitting on the table, I have it glowing, like there's some re reflective light. And then I smeared some of um, the yellow oxide and the raw sienna, that's yellow oxide right there, just to pick up the pear color onto the table or whatever this is. So that's just really fun. And then I put some of the background color teal in the pear as marks, blemishes in the pear. Put some brown blemishes, some light ones too. Okay, we'll do a little tour here. Oh, and I went down to a one inch here, flat brush for more control. I think I mentioned that. This painting didn't take me that long, um, but I don't know, maybe three afternoons. I've got a lot of things going on at once, but I liked having just a little bit more control, but really a bigger brush would have been quicker work and maybe more expressive. But I just didn't want to use, oh, I don't have it here. I didn't want to use that two inch brush on the pears. And you know, I just don't use this brush much. I don't know, I, I need to learn how to use it. It's a really nice brush. It's an artist loft brush. Um, it's a long handle so you can stand back from a painting, which is nice. I think part of the problem is, is a bigger brush works better with a bigger palette. Uh, or I'm sorry, a smaller brush. Yeah, a bigger brush works better if you have a bigger palette. Where it's easier for me to get in here with a little bit smaller brush to get the colors I want. Or I'm just complaining. <laughs> Maybe I'm just complaining. Okay. Let's do a little tour. I like the drips. That was an accident. That was one of those Bob Ross happy accidents. But isn't that fun? It's more entertaining to have the little bits of color in the pair. Sort of like little surprises, little bits of confetti, little, little bits of happiness, that kind of thing. And then like that's the background that I painted coming through up here too. You want to see the stems. I was going to make them browner, but then I kind of liked putting in the green too. I changed my mind as I go. Every time, and then if I were to paint this again, it would turn out different. I love, I love the aqua in the pear. Little hints of aqua. I think that's really nice. And I really like the glow. Isn't that pretty? I hope it looks good on video. Um, my phone will try to correct for color. Um, your, whatever you're watching on has its own color. I did paint over to the side. And the, the bottom just is continuation. Oh, 
I don't know if you want to see the top. There's not, I don't know if I can get it in there. Oh, I can't. Most of it. There's not much to it. So give this a try. It's good practice drawing. It's good practice painting. It's good practice using bigger brushes than you normally do. I'm working on a pet portrait right now. Bailey. Um, it'll post a little bit after this one. Maybe a week or two. Um, and it's very detailed and, and much tighter, so it's fun to get in here and loosen up. I really liked using the larger brush, plus it, plus it was quick. I think I've mentioned that before. I'm probably repeating myself. I so love hanging out with you guys. I hope you enjoy it too. It just makes my um, art journey a thousand times better. And it's fun to share with you what I'm working on as a professional full-time artist. I love the comments. Super appreciate the support. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.